Good day, welcome to Great Point Retro. I'm Gord Fessick. This is my wife's cat, Star, and Gigi's around here somewhere. Our topic today is this pet style Vic 20 that we picked up from Roadkill Incorporated. We've only now just got a chance to look at it because we've only just received the power supply for this thing. So we'll see why it doesn't turn on, and then we'll see if we get it working as well as my nice second generation Vic 20. Let's get her done. So right away, the older Vic 20's got some loose pieces in here. We're gonna begin by taking this apart and making sure there's nothing shorting on the inside and maybe we'll find the missing piece for this uh, keyboard as well, which appears to be stuck kind of halfway. This VIC-20 is just as easy to take apart as the second gen one. It's a definitely a slightly larger board already. I'm seeing that this very large, I guess it's a heat shield, came right off. And there's a loose uh, bolt in there or some such. That might have been the cause of uh, the thing not turning on. But I actually found a dead fuse in there and so far that's the only real fault I found in there. But afterward I did a nice shake around just to make sure I didn't lose anything else in here. Yeah, underneath there is a bolt that holds that heat shield in place. I don't know what's underneath that metal cap, though. Let's get the board out of there. And there's the screw. It fell out as soon as I took out the board. <laughs> okay, we got our video plugged in. It's the standard 5-pin video, not the 8-pin S-video hack on this one. This is a original power supply here. It's just a AC transformer. Okay, it's in. Fuse hasn't popped. Let's fire it up. We got some sound. Look at that! <laughs> well, it's a little darker, but it actually worked on the first try. So, not bad. Doesn't turn on, now turns on. Let's start cleaning this thing up. This uh, VIC-20 has a pet style keyboard with a different style of keycaps than the second gen VIC-20. That space bar is giving me some trouble. It's uh, kind of wobbling in there, similar to what David Murray had to deal with on his pet. But that was a different problem that his brother ended up fixing up. Let's see if I can show you what I'm running into over here. Nothing's busted, but there's a bigger problem. The pet space bar uses these metal inserts to hold the spacebar stabilizer in place. And that's friction fit only. So that could be a problem as the keyboard ages and as the spacebar ages, those openings actually spread a little bit so that the metal standoffs actually slide out and they don't stay put anymore. And that's where we're getting the funny wobbling from. You can get a nice closer look at the problem right here. So that's the pet style spacebar. I had a very simple solution to this. Uh, for the metal fittings, I simply wrapped some double-sided tape around them above the stabilizer, and after that, the uh, stabilizer bit stayed in place. And there we go. That uh, is just in much better shape right now. I only had to use a little bit of pressure and one layer of double-sided tape to get that to fit. Let's just test all of the other keys on this because uh, David ran into all kinds of problems with his keyboard and I was hoping I didn't have to buy any of that silver stuff to coat the bottoms of those plungers. Fortunately, it appeared that every single key worked perfectly. So I didn't have to disassemble the keyboard any further than this. There we go. So, doesn't turn on, not a problem anymore. Let's test this with the penultimate plus cartridge. Let's make sure that we got some basic functionality in here. Yeah, the VIC chip is working just fine. Sound is working just fine. My joystick is actually got a problem, but that's the joystick's fault, not the VIC's problem. All right. Now let's move on to the cleaning. Ended up using my floss pick to remove these badges. I'm gonna clean that up and I'm gonna skip right to the 
contact cement to get these off. And you can notice a slight color difference between where the badge was and the rest of the case. So the case is mildly yellowed, except for this really ugly yellowish brown streak near the bottom left of the case, on both halves of the case at that. But before we can do anything about that, we use the usual suspects, dish soap, alcohol, and baking soda to get all these off. Alcohol did not remove any of the scuffs, but baking soda did. I've actually started using baking soda for my general house cleaning. I'm surprised I didn't know all this after all this time. But it does an amazing job on these scuffs. And also works on glass when you've had grease on it. It also works on countertops when you have long time grease. My goodness. Why didn't I think of this before? There's that yellow or brown streak near the bottom right, uh, left there. Look at that. Look at the serial number on here. How old is this VIC-20? The motherboard says 1981. So here's something I didn't know before. The keycaps actually come off of these black uh, stocks here, the key stocks. But look over here. There are these little raised bits. They're covered with tape and they look like they're holes. They appear to be the rough shape of a numeric keypad, like what you would find on a later Commodore PET. That looks like that's something else this VIC-20 shares with the PET, is the original keyframe uh, from the PET and just different keycaps. That's going to make cleaning this keyboard a lot easier. I don't have to disassemble the keyboard any further than this. I just use a brush and some paper towels and just dry uh, rubbing off all the dust. The keys themselves are another matter. I don't have to soak these ones. I do just uh, wipe them off with just dish soap on the rag. Give them a chance to dry. You get an old computer like this from someone that you don't know all that well. Take a moment to clean it up like this. I avoided using alcohol on this because I did not want, not want to rub off the front uh, plating on those uh, keycaps. So that way the special symbol stayed in place. And we're almost done. This took quite some time. <laughs> it always does. Alright, now comes the Retrobrite. This time I've got the two case halves uh, fastened together so I can stick a rock inside. That, uh, jar that jug has a mix of about 12% uh, peroxide. I mixed uh, my 35% with some water to cut it down. I hope to avoid some splotches this time when I do the Retrobriting. And on go the lights. Alright, rather than give you another boring key montage, I've got the, the keyboard reassembled and it is looking much better. Yep, just a little dusty. I wiped off all of the keys. I dusted in between all of the stocks and, and plungers and so forth. Space bar is working much better. This should be ready for reassembly once the Retrobrite's done. Coming back to the Retrobrite after approximately three and a half hours. It actually did a pretty good job, but you'll see in a moment that I didn't quite get it right. I emptied the tub and filled it up with clean water to rinse all the peroxide off before taking it out of the tub this time. And well, the spot where the badge was does look good. So the majority of the case is fine, but the bottom is not so much. There's still a streak on that bottom left corner. And I decided I didn't want to soak the whole thing overnight. So we'll come back to that in just a bit. So yeah, here's my problem. I've got this band still here and it goes all the way around here. I'm not sure how this happened. Curiously, it stops, but there's a little bit of edge over here. The rest of the case matches the control just fine. So this brought me to the same problem that David Murray ran into with his machine. And these are the same three doors, but I decided, no, nope, I need a fourth option. And I, and this time I went with the nuclear blast. <laughs> now, I don't have any peroxide cream. I can't find the stuff and I can't order the stuff. I don't know where David gets his. 
So I decided to try something a little different. This is just uh, cooking flour, and I'm putting my peroxide in straight up. If you attempt this, wear rubber gloves. You will get peroxide on your fingertips, and they will turn white on you. <laughs> Turned out I needed a lot of peroxide for this little bit of flour, so I ended up putting it in a larger container, and I used an electric blender that you'll see in a bit. Now because this is peroxide, I imagine this is going to keep for a long time, so I sealed it up. I may just have a solution for cleaning up a very awkward piece that I have to work on between now and October. So yeah, I'm not touching that. Into the water it goes. <laughs> And let's get the saran wrap out and we'll paint this uh, spot, all of the really dark spots, with our little peroxide flower paste. I'm going to have this sh uh, shined directly underneath the UV lights. And there we go. So there's the, there's the cling wrap. So I bring it back down to my, uh, my tub downstairs, but I set it on the rock so it sits on an angle so that one of the sides faces one light and one side faces the other light. It gets direct exposure. While that's going on, I reassemble this uh, heat sink inside the main board for the VIC-20. I don't know what that metal piece is. I just had to buy a longer screw bolt though, just so it would come all the way up. That allowed me to fasten that heat sink back into place, but I also got a nut to match. Here it comes. And that'll help hold that heat sink in place. I wish I knew what was in there, but I'm not going to take this thing apart any further. A little bit of tightening up, and that heat sink gets firmly attached in place. Hopefully, no more rattling around in there. Yeah, that isn't going anywhere. Another three hours later, underneath the nuclear blast UV lights. Okay, so that corner, I mean, I think I can barely see the outline of it, but it's not nearly as bad. It's not nearly as bad as it was. Here it's almost unnoticeable. Chalk one up for the for the peroxide paste and the UV light. <laughs> well, David, uh, maybe try this with your uh, older pet style Vic 20. Uh, use your salon cream, or if you feel especially crazy, make a flower and peroxide paste and coat it in that. And use your UV lights, your nuclear blast, as you call it. <laughs> Well, the nuclear blast did its job just fine, so now we can get back to reassembly. I've already gone ahead and reattached the badges using some contact cement, just like I did with the Commodore 16. You didn't need to see that again. Let's get back to the rest of the reassembly. With the heat sink in place and that jumper wire properly connected, we can reseat the main board back into the VIC-20 case. Interesting that they had connectors for this instead of the barely soldered on wires on the second gen model. I guess they were really in cost cutting mode when they did the second gen board. Now some of those uh, clips on the back are busted. I have already ordered uh, some 3D printed parts based on the Geek Pub's design and I ordered them from PCBWay for a reason that I'll explain in a bit. No, we're not sponsored yet, but I've got a problem that I'm going to need everyone's help with shortly. I'm listening for any more rattling around. I think there's a ferrite bead in there that's rattling around on its, uh, on its metal bits, on its leads, but that's it. Nothing else is moving around in there. There we go, for dramatic effect, from doesn't turn on with a big old dark yellow stripe on the bottom left and a busted space bar, to a fully brightened up VIC-20 with all cleaned up keys, no more streaking, no more brown spots, and working perfectly. Let's do some final testing. I got my SD to IEC and my penultimate plus cartridge Let's fire up Doom first, because I know it's going to take up the full 32K, and it's going to push this machine to its limits. And there we go. 
I wonder if we can ever get this working with an, NES, an SNES gamepad or something. <laughs> Nice. I got a better working joystick for this test, although my skills could use some improving. <laughs> although they've definitely improved here. Look out, guys. Here I come. And there we go. We have a first generation VIC-20 that was originally doesn't turn on, which only needed a replacement fuse, a new power supply, and a little bit of TLC. Not to mention that paste that I made with the hydrogen peroxide and the flour took that dumb yellow streak off of the side of there. David, if you're watching this, try the paste or try your salon cream. I know you've used that before. And those uh, overhead UV lights that you bought. I've got the exact same lights. Maybe they're 100 watts instead of the 60 watts you got. But that did an amazing job on the really darkened uh, plastic on this first gen VIX-20. Maybe your first gen VIX-20 can get cleaned up as well. Before I sign off, I got an email from PCBWay. Now, I actually checked, it really came from their network. I do IT for a living, so I can tell the difference. Now, I've never dealt with PCBWay. Great White Retro was not sponsored by PCBWay. Uh, should I consider taking them up on their offer? I know I could use some 3D printed parts to do some further fixes here. But uh, I'm only a little channel. I've got maybe 100 subscribers. I'd be lucky if I did 110 subscribers by the time this recording gets out. Should I talk to those guys? Should I wait till I get 1,000 subscribers and then I'm AdSense approved? Uh, who knows? I certainly wasn't expecting that. Let me know in the comments in this video. Until then, good day.